everybody, and welcome to the Quadcopter Review. I'm your host, Pepe Prawns. As always, gonna ask you to like, comment on this video if you care to, and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing helps me out a ton. Liking and commenting helps us out here on the YouTube search engine. And if you look here at the top on any one of my videos at the beginning, you'll see the giveaways going on here at the channel. So today what we're going to talk about, guys, is I have this X-Lite Pro that just came in. Now, before I can even get into reviewing the Pro, we need to talk about how you're going to get that access protocol firmware onto your little receivers in order to actually use this radio and the access protocol at all. So I'm going to show you a couple ways. We're going to do it without having it soldered on to a quad or anything at all. We're going to show you how to do it with a plug setup kind of like on the XSR and I can show you what it'll be like to set up a plug to be on a soldered receiver as well. So what we've got is we've got a regular XM and we've got an XSR in this Armiton here and the first thing that we're going to need to do of course is get some way to get it on here without having it solder on. Now I got these little clips or little like wire clips for an analyzer that you can get from Amazon. I got a set of these and you can get them in a set of 10 like I did for $8 or you can get them for cheaper for like three bucks for a set of three but you're gonna wait like 30 days from from China but this set of 10 here you can get from Amazon for about eight bucks and you just end up with a bunch of extra ones here you just peel off what colors you want to use I'll have the links below to that three and to this 10 set that you can get on Amazon but these are pretty cool because they're just little wire clips and the other end is much like a servo plug that you can plug right in to your pin out on the uh, x Lite or any other receiver like the QX7 and so on. But before we can do anything, we gotta make sure we have the firmware on the actual disc itself in order to do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out our disc here and we're gonna put it in a USB reader and we're gonna stick it into the PC and we're gonna download what we need in order to do this. So let's go ahead and stick this in the machine. Now the first thing you wanna do is go to Google and type FRSky Access Firmware. It'll bring up the FRSky page. Go ahead and go to that. Currently on the left hand side, you are going to see the downloads for your XMs, your RXSRs, and the other receivers so that you can go ahead and download those firmwares for the access protocol and get them so you can put them on your card because you're going to need them on your card in order to do the update. So let's just quickly grab these. I've already downloaded these, so I'll just show you where they are and cancel out because I've already got a copy saved. And you're also uh, going to be able to go into the download section here for this radio and you can get the SD card set with all the, uh, all the different things you need on your SD card from that by going to the download section and selecting your radio. You go in there. <clears throat> You can get the manual, you can get the firmware, and you can get the SD card contents. So let's go ahead and select that SD card contents here, download up the package, and get that on a new SD card for this x -Lite Pro, because as I mentioned, it does not come with a card, and you're going to need the uh, card contents on there. So as you can see, I've already gone ahead and downloaded these right here and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the SD card content as you can see that's all the different folders for your sounds and firmware and such that you're going to need on there so we're going to take that and extract it onto the card itself here and let's go ahead and select that and extract that and here it comes we'll put this in fast forward takes a little bit of time to extract all those folders in there but what we're going to need is we're going to need that firmware folder that you see in there on the SD card so once this is all set that firmware folder here is what we're going to want to put our little uh, firmwares for our receivers into so you just go into your individual receiver items here and take the contents and extract those into the firmware folder Let's go ahead and browse to that firmware folder and we're going to select that folder and we're going to go ahead and copy that stuff in there. There's a readme file in this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and uh, copy that readme file in over the readme that was in there that just told you what the folder was for. And we can go ahead and get those in there. And now we will do 
the XR package. Now the XM didn't have the two protocols, one for FCC and one for the European, but the uh, XR does. So let's go ahead and download these in there as well. And now we have those contents in our firmware folder so we can use them to update our firmware. Now you can also go into the Tyrannus site and get some of the other things that are contained in these folders like sound packages and hall scripts and things like that and all you need to do for that is plug in Tyrannus into your Google and go to the Tyrannus homepage here with OpenTX page actually and go in there and you'll see you have your companion download and you'll find some sound packages and some other little goodies that you can use to customize your OpenTX by just going in here and looking around. There's also some instructions out there on how to change your your uh, image on your flash screen and things like that. Now a lot of reviewers are complaining about this radio and as a reviewer yeah it could be a pain because you are basically you would have to change all your receivers to work with this radio but I think as a regular pilot who has maybe you know three quads the standard three versions of the same thing to have to do this process isn't as bad as it is for the reviewers that are you know calling this a piece of junk and so on. Um, yeah, it was released a little bit early, but this is really not hard for a user if you want to get into the access protocol and you buy this and only have a few quads to, that you need to work with. So what we do is we take these little clips, open up the pin here. On this particular XM, of course, we've got the ground over here on the far right. We've got the 5 volt in the middle. And on the outside, we're going to have our S port. <clears throat> so we go ahead and plug these guys in with these little clips. Uh, the way these clips are made, they keeps you from crossing your pads because it, uh, the, the little plastic there, it pulls itself all the way in. The plastic keeps you where you're not going to cross your pads. So you're pretty good there. As you can see, we're all hooked up. Now, if you're going to do like an XSR or an RXSR, you need a little cable like this. It's got the servo on one end and the plug on the other side. Make sure your pin order is correct for whatever particular receiver you're going to update and that will plug right into the front of the of the pro and you also could solder the ends instead of that little plug leaving your servo plug on the other side you could solder that directly onto another receiver that you're doing like an XM plus or something and that again plugs right into the back of the uh, X Lite Pro <clears throat> now for B you also on your other radios you uh, can use the pins directly in the bay like the QX7 just make sure you look up the pin out of that and that you plug into the correct pins so on this one though we plug in right here I've marked mine with a little cheat for my negative and positive because I have a crap memory so that way I know I'm plugging into the right spots but this one right here as you can see is set up we just make sure we've got ground positive and S port in the right place and you can plug it directly in to the radio here and then you could take the uh, XSR or the RXSR and plug it in and do the same steps we're going to do here on this little XM. So for this one though these little pins here are awesome because you can stick them in individually like this. Each one in the right place we've got our negative, got our positive here if we can pick it up plug that in to the second hole and then we plug our S port into the last hole here and we're going to be ready to flash our firmware. It doesn't have to be access you're flashing here you can do the same method with your other radios if you just need to upgrade the firmware of your receiver. So we turn on the old x -Lite Pro sure we get rid of all of our little messages that she's yelling at us and what we're going to do is press the stick to the left and that's going to take us into our radio setup now we're going to go to page two of seven and then as you can see here we're just going to go down to firmware click in the joystick for our enter button as you can see, we can see our firmwares there. So we're going to come down. This is an XM, so we're going to use the XM Access 
firmware, we're going to flash the S port by clicking in the button. And as you can see, our device is starting to write the firmware. And if you look at the receiver itself here, you'll see our lights are blinking, telling us that we are in progress writing the firmware. And what we do is we have a progress bar here on the radio itself. It's going to tell us it's writing until it's done. And then we will have flashed our little receiver with the access firmware so we can put it into a quad and actually start really testing out this radio and give it a good review instead of just a quickie. So that's all done. You can see our receiver lights turned off. Flash is successful. Okay out of it. And there we go. That one's all set. And like I said, if you wanted to do uh, one of your other ones, you can use any of those cables I showed you, either plugging it into the plug by unplugging your quad, um, your receiver on your quad and using the little wire I showed you, or you can solder it on and do it with it soldered. I'm also considered thinking maybe you could do it with little alligator clip versions of these uh, and connecting to your already soldered on receiver, but I, I can't say for sure to do that because I haven't tried it. But yeah, you can make one of these pretty simply out of any uh, servo uh, wire and, and add the correct clamp at the end or cut that little little uh, plug off and solder it directly to your receiver and you'll be all set. So I hope this helps you understand what you need to do to get the access protocol on your receivers so you can start using your X-Lite Pro or you can use one of the other radios that soon will be, will be coming out with the access protocol as well. And as I said, I'll be back to do a more thorough review on the radio itself and all of its little, uh, all of its little pluses and minuses. But first, we actually had to be able to use it. So that's why I made this video for y'all. So as always, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Need subscribers bad. And look for the links below for all of my little tools. Happy flying. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the quadcopter review. If you want to see more interesting reviews on FPV related stuff, take a look up here in the old right corner right there. You'll find links to all the rest of my reviews. If you want to get in on some of the best giveaways on YouTube, look over here. Don't forget to subscribe right here on my chin. And if you want to check out my flying only videos separated from the review channel, check that out right here. And thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe and happy flying.